Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello dear audience in my YouTube channel. Thank you for coming to my YouTube channel. This time I'm going to share with you information about marriage in Islam. Why I am interested to talk about marriage in Islam because there are sort of different understandings and different interpretation about what marriage is. Now, let me start by showing you a book that I used to understand what marriage is. We need to distinguish the meaning of marriage with wedding, with relationship and obligation. There are sort of different things that I'm going to show you uh, with the book that I used to understand what marriage in Islam is. This is the book that I used to understand about marriage. The title of the book is Kluarga uh, Bagya, A Happy Family. That is the meaning of this book in English. This book was written by uh, Haji Mustafa Baisa, uh, Happy Family. This book talks about nikah, talak, ruju, and Kluarga Berencana, or uh, for family planning and my video is for 17 years old above and this is not for kids this is entirely for people who are about to get married and to understand the meaning of getting married in islam this topic is important for people to know especially for people who consider that marriage in islam is arranged marriage or forced marriage or any sort of marriage before understanding or judging what marriage in Islam is. Therefore, I try to share what does it mean with marriage in Islam by using this book. This book was written in Bahasa Indonesia by Haji Mustafa Baisa. This is the name of the author. And the content of this book is much related to a marriage and how marriage is organized. If you are a community of, from the LGBT or community outside Islam, please discontinue watching this movie because this video is intended for people who believe in Islam and for people who want to live their life in Islamic way. Muslims are not perfect. I am not perfect. I still learn how to control and behave myself as a Muslim. Sometimes I make sense. I am vulnerable in front of God's sight. So I try to understand the very best aspect of Islam. I'm going to start my explanation about marriage in Islam. I'm going to split this information into three. Uh, the first one is uh, pre-marriage or before marriage. The second one is marriage itself, what you need to do when you get married. And the third one is after marriage. It's going to be very interesting for you to listen to my explanation about marriage. Each session will cover different topics, small details. Um, I'm going to read the Arabic letters in this book and the Indonesian translation. After that, I'm going to share with you the interpretation of the translation. Although I do not speak Arabic, but the translation of this Arabic letters in this book had been considered legal by Indonesian Religious Affairs Ministry. So I think it's going to be all right if I use this book to be shared with all of you in my YouTube channel. Remember, this is not for kids. If you are still a kid, you need to go back. But if you are an adult and you are ready to get married, then this video is for you, especially if you are a Muslim. All right, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala asrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi rasulillahi ajma'in. Faya ibadallah, ittaqullaha haq Wala tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun.
In the name of Allah, I start my description. I'm going to explain uh, this content, especially for you, my Muslim community, my Muslim family, and, and for friends who might be uh, Christian or Jews or Hindu, Buddhist, or even who disbelieve in God, but they respect humanity. Then if you find this video is interesting, then you may share it with your friend in order to give enlightenment what I believe is a Muslim about Mary itself. There will be certain interesting topics that I'm going to cover too while I'm talking. Okay, but that's my personal opinion. It does not relate to the opinion of my uh, country or my culture or even my uh, ministry of, of the Indonesian government. No, this is this video has uh, my personal description about marriage in Islam. All right, so this book was published by Usaha Keluarga Publisher. And the book that I scanned for this video was printed uh, for the third time, for the third time. And this book was published in East Java, Bebe Kanjagalan, 322 Street. First part, let me start with this. I, I would be happy if you uh, can see this, this one. Okay, all right. This is the first, uh, con this book contains these ideas. We start by the notion of why should we get married? What does it mean with marriage? And then what is it to do with relationship? And then in what way we can maintain and protect that kind of relationship? Is it going to be legal, official, or if it's just superficial? We start page four, Berkembang uh, Biak Manusia. It simply says that humans can multiply themselves by doing what do we call um, sexual intercourse. And that consists of men and women because biologically they have their own roles and system. Female has the ovum or the egg an ovarium where the baby can be found and the man has the sperm which is a uh, function to uh, fertilize the woman and when the sperm and the egg meet together the woman can be pregnant and there will be a baby after that that is the idea from the science of the biologically standpoint but what about the religious standpoint Islamic standpoint about human uh, multiplication process, multiply. It says, let me read you in page four, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This one, as you can see in the slide. Ya ayyuhan nasu taqo rabbakumul ladhi qalaqakum min nafsi wahidah. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا That is the reading of the Arabic letters. This, this uh, ayah can be found in uh, the Quran, Surah Anisa, uh, verse uh, one, uh, line one. The translation is: uh, Wahai seluruh manusia, bertakwalah kepada Tuhan kamu yang telah menciptakan kamu dari satu unsur Adam dan daripadanya Allah menciptakan istrinya Hawa. Dan daripada keduanya sejodoh Allah memperkembang biakan laki-laki dan perempuan yang banyak. Dan bertakwalah kepada Allah yang dengan atas namanya kamu saling meminta satu sama dengan yang lain. Dan peliharalah hubungan silaturahmi. Sesungguhnya Allah men senantiasa menjaga dan mengawasi kamu. So this is the basic principle of uh, marriage in Islam. In order not to make human become wild in terms of their uh, biological needs, of the sexual desire, or 
um, the need to have their uh, generation after they get married. So this is the point that that Allah uh, Subhanahu wa Taala stated in the Quran. Why is Allah manusia? So it means that to all human beings on earth, God says to all of human beings, it says, "Bertakwalah kepada Tuhan kamu yang telah menciptakan kamu dari satu unsur Adam." So, bertakwala, you need to obey the God and worship God, and you need to follow all God's um, commandment and then order to uh, all human beings uh, that we were all created from one source and that was known as Adam, alaihi salam, and from him, Allah created his wife. And from the two of them, God uh, multiplied uh, man and woman uh, with many numbers, you know, uh, many women and men, and follow what God has stated with that, so that the man and the woman can help each other. And sometimes God also wanted us to keep the Salatul Rahmi, or it means the family relationship. We need to keep and maintain that family relationship, friendship, our a close connection with our classmates or best friends. We need to keep that. That's what God uh, stated from the Nisa uh, line one. Verily, God uh, always uh, looking after and uh, watch you. So that, that's what it says. This is this is a very strong point that you can see from the Quran, Quran and Nisa, uh, page one. This is about how human uh, need to regenerate themselves. Otherwise, one individual man can grow old, and then as the time passing by, the old one will uh, will will disappear in terms of uh, passing away. So that's the first idea about marriage in Islam. It was stated that human need to have regeneration of themselves. And one of the ways is to marry it or having relationship in such a legal way. Now, the next uh, one we need to understand, as you can see on page five, these are the signs of Allah's greatness. Tanda kebesaran Allah is is the God uh, greatness in Islamic perspective. First one, uh, let me read you this Arabic letters. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala bainakum mawaddatan wa rahma inna fi dhalika la ayatil liqawmin yatafakkarun now that is the arabic letters about the signs of allah's greatness you can find that in arum uh, first uh, uh, chapter arum verse 21 it says from all the greatness of his signs uh, the, the signs of his greatness yeah, you know his means god he has created you uh, wives from your own kind he has created you. You in here mean to all men. So remember, if people think that uh, God talks or speak to a man and he is about to marry uh, many women, that's completely wrong. So the idea in the sentence means that all men were created and mm, they're married to their own wives from your own kind. From your own kind means you are human, so you marry with a human. You don't marry with animals. You don't marry with uh, stuff. Or, I'm, for example, I marry with a knife, scissors like this. No, that's, that's completely in, wrong in Islamic perspective. You cannot marry. You cannot regenerate yourself with that. That's just an absolute truth and fact for that matter. And then um, God created you, your wife, and from your own kind, so that you can um, orientate and feel warm with them. So with your with your wife, feel warm. So not just feel hot, okay? Hot, not things like that. So you feel warm, and you it's a very fulfilling relationship when you get married. 
with your opposite gender. Okay, that's one thing. And dijadikan antara kamu suasana kasih sayang mesra. So there is a mutual relationship that's created to you so that you can feel content and you feel peace and safe. Verily, that kind of sign is the signs for those who think. So that is the first verse of this uh, Arum chapter in the Quran. That is the signs of God. So the idea of God or Allah in, in Islamic does not come in the form of physical existence. God gives clues to humans to understand him through his creations. God gives examples for humans by uh, providing many metaphors, analytical statement. And for those who think, if you think well, you ponder it and you try to internalize what does it mean with the existence of yourself and your significant other and how you have child, that that will be the signs of Allah's greatness. So the greatness, Allah doesn't tell I am look like this. I I can be seen like this way. I wear this. No, God doesn't appear like that in Islam because God is beyond human logic. What human logic can understand is his creation. Okay? So just like you can see me of course uh, because I'm a human, I'm a physical being. But if you want to see God, you can only see his creation because you or me is his creation so as a creation we can only see and understand his creation it's quite difficult to see the existence of god physically okay so you you can get logic right so i hope that you can get that kind of logic the next one we would like to see now this was one the Um, Anjur and Kawin. So it, it means that Islam uh, protect people to get married and it is encouraged and it is supported. Getting married in Islam is supported and it is completely illegal in the form of the government. That's one thing for sure. Now let me read you the Arabic letters and this is the Hadith. Um, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated about this during his um, legacy as a prophet and his life. So he said, like this one, it was taken from Bukhari and Muslim had this uh, Sahih riwayat uh, Bukhari and Muslim. Let me read you the Arabic letter. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ya ma'shara shababi man istata'a minkum. منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبشر وأحسن للفرج ومن لم يستطع فعليه بالصوم فإنه له له وجاء so there is the Arabic letters وجاء okay so sorry I for I need to uh, sound this instead of un or wija why pemuda pemuda it says it says uh, this is the prophet of muhammad uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam stated oh all men and women so it says women men women and men at the time just the same because it wasn't really that different between men and women because they were completely men or human okay now it says to all men Um, whoever has uh, abilities or potential or competence to get married, then please soon get married. So, so there are certain conditions or pre-requirements that you need to fulfill if you want to get married. It's not like you're falling in love and then you meet together and then you you feel want to bless your lust desire and then you, you you get married. No, that's not the whole point of getting married in Islam. No, it's about having the legal standing and official existence of your relationship with someone in the front of God, in the front of society, your country and everywhere you go on earth. And because it says that because by marriage it can 
uh, refresh your eyes and it can protect your your uh, farji means is your, uh, your your sex and it will help you to control yourself from doing any other thing that can harm yourself even said even people say that it was biological needs but if you cannot control it it's still going it's still uh, be damaging to yourself in certain points meanwhile for those who have no abilities to get married or no potential condition to make you uh, married then he or she needs to do fasting fasting means uh, it's like fasting you do it in ramadan but you can do it in your daily life you have to fast in yourself because fasting can um, push the desire uh, to a certain uh, to a certain degree um, you can control yourself by doing fasting this is the most important part of uh, the encouragement to get married this picture shows the javanese culture um, because remember that this book was published in east java so um, this book is quite old i think it's 1980s or something so this is interesting encouragement of getting married in islam right now so far we see we have quoted from the quran um, Anisa first one and Arum first twenty one, and we also have a statement from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu sallam about a marriage. What about the next one now? So this is, says about um, women who cannot be married with. Uh, this is this is the definition of this statement. Perempuan yang tidak boleh dikawin. Okay, um, there are certain women that you cannot get married with. Let me read you the Arabic letter, or while I'm reading, you can also read this text for yourself. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Hurimat alaikum ummahatukum wa banatukum wa khawatukum wa ammatukum wa khalatukum wa banatul akhi wa banatul ukhti wa ummahatukum allati arda'nakum wa akhawatukum minar rada ati wa ummahatu nisaikum wa rabaibukum wa rab wa rabaibukum mullati fi hujurikum min nisaikum allati dakhaltum bihinna fa in lam takunu dakhaltum bihinna fala junaha alaikum wa halailu abnaikum alladhina min aslibat min asliba min as min aslibaikum wa an tajma'u baina ukhtaini illa ma qad salafa innallaha kana ghafurur rahim sorry um, sorry call along so this um, i'm sorry that i found a bit difficulties in reading this uh, there's a certain um, and uh, the certain letters that is missing or something right here. Okay, now it says um, it is forbidden for you to marry your mothers. So there are certain women that you can marry in your life. It's it's quite absurd that you were born for your mother and then you marry your mother. That's absurd. It's not acceptable in Islam. Okay, this is forbidden for you to marry your mothers. Um, your daughters your biological daughters or even your stepdaughters you can you cannot marry them in islam and your sisters from your mother or your father your sisters or your siblings your aunties from your father's side so, or from your mother's side you cannot marry your aunties if you are a, a man or you cannot marry your uncles from your um um, mother's sides or father's sides and daughters of your sisters or your brothers you cannot marry them the female children from your sisters female children of your brothers or female children of your sisters you cannot marry those your nephew your nephew your um the daughters of your the yeah the daughters of your sisters or of your siblings and a woman who feed you with a breast 
you know, you know, breastfeeding you when you were a child. You couldn't marry that, that woman. And the child of your wives, you know, um, dan dalam pemeliharaanmu dari istri-istri yang telah kamu campuri. So from woman who who that you had slept with, you cannot marry with those child. Okay, the children that were born uh, after the relationship between you and your wives, or even with your ex-wife, you cannot marry your own daughter. Tetapi jika kamu mencampur dengan istrimu itu dan sudah cerai maka tidak berusaha kamu mengawinnya. So, for example, you marry a woman, your second wife, because your first wife was uh, passed away, for example, and then you want to get married to second woman, and um, you have the daughter, you have the daughter with with her, uh, you can marry that daughter. Okay, so uh, because uh, with one condition that you have never slept with her, that's one thing, and. Um, It is forbidden for you um, to marry your own uh, stepson or step step stepdaughters. You cannot marry her. Uh, it says that the, the children of your of your um, the wives of your son. You cannot marry her. Okay, and to marry uh, two two sisters, you cannot do that. You cannot marry two sisters, for example, uh, John, Mary, and Jane. So Mary and Jane are siblings, and they are sisters. Um, John marry marry with uh, Mary, and then John also marry with Jane. That is completely forbidden in Islam. It's not allowed, except um, what for whatever happened in the past. Okay, in the past means that I'm talking to you right now. But uh, people who committed this kind of thing before, long time ago, before Islam was spread, then that was it says that uh, verily God is the most forgiven, forgiving, and uh, the most lovable. I think that's this the translation. Okay, Mahapanyang means the 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 most love loving and the most lovable uh, God uh, of the universe. So these are women that you cannot marry with, forbidden. There is a certain biological reason and biological standpoint for this matter. It's really absurd if you marry your own mother, the woman who gave birth to you to this world. It's completely, for me, it's completely illogical if someone uh, did that. All right, so this is the certain condition where a man cannot marry Um, a certain woman uh, in their life. The next slides I'm going to show you the idea of ethnicity in the world and how people live together side by side on earth. This is uh, from the Surat uh, Al-Hujarat, verse 13. It says how important it is for people to know each other and to live side by side peacefully. Let me read you this verse uh, from the Arabic letters. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ya ayuhan nasu inna khalaqna kum min zakarin wa untha wa ja'alna kum shu'uban wa qaba ila lita'arafu inna akramakum inna Allahi atqaqum. So that is the definition of concept of the world ethnicity. It says that Um, oh, all human beings, uh, verily we created you from a man and a woman. That's correct. I have one man and one woman. So it's going to be impossible if you get two men with one woman. Uh, the, the father will not be um, recognizable. It's quite difficult to recognize which one is the father. So we, you all created from a man and a woman and create you nations. So, so this is the plural, nations and ethnic, so that you know each other. So this is the reason why there were white and there are blacks and Asian, people of color, and people live in different places on earth in order to know each other. That is the purpose of the creation of us in that kind of situation. 
Imagine if we are all the same. The life is going to be a very boring place to see and to interact with. And then he says, Verily, the most um, noble people among you is the most uh, people who believe and obedient among you. So he says, so God says to us, all of us, that the, the best and the noble person among other human beings on earth is the one that obeys and um, commit the Islamic uh, values uh, in front of God and in front of the society. Okay, so it's not about the wealthy or success in the world. No, it's not that point. It's the, the one who can control himself and and then it's a bertakwa. It means that uh, obeys what God states. So this is, I think this is the, um, the great statement that uh, Allah SWT has stated in the Quran. The next one, we have uh, equals. So, American or the USA talks about equality and many other concepts and topics about this. Basically, Islam had talked about this in a very important standpoint. And this is obvious. It says from Hadith uh, Tabrani, Red Tabrani, stated that, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Al Muslimuna. So this what it says. Actually, Islamic Islamic people or people who believe in Islam are brothers and sisters. No one is more uh, grateful than the others, except people who are taqwa. Uh, so this is my first explanation about uh, marriage in Islam. I'm going to continue with the next video in the next session. Until then, if you have any question, please write down your question in the comment section. I'm going to do my zuhur prayer. Uh, Thank you for listening to me. If you have any question, please uh, write down your question. I hope that my explanation is um, useful for you, okay? In order to clarify, uh, the notion of marriage in Islam. And this is very important for people to understand these days. In order to clean the misconception and to clean the misunderstanding. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Have a good day.